Hi guys, thanks for joining me, I'm Top Table Steve. Come and join me in this video as I build a new board for the Scour and the Cheshire 2019. Thanks for joining me guys. In this video, I am gonna be building a Mordor themed board. It's going to be fairly generic. It's going to be a lot of sort of uh, ash landscape with a lot of rocky outcrops and crags and crevices and things like that. Maybe a few little lava flows. Nothing too much. Um, if I do add lava, it's going to be very uh, like very subtle additions. I, I'm not a fan of boards with big lava rivers on and things like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build the base of the board and then I'll speed that up. So because you've all seen that a million times before and then we'll come back once I've done that, so I'll see you in a second. So here we are guys, the boring bit is over. As you can see, I have cut uh, three pieces of uh, just standard foam, what you can get from any uh, builder's yard. I got this from B&Q if you're in the UK. Um, and it's 25 mil. I cut it to fit in between the battens. Um, the board is all now stuck and sturdy and very light. So what I'm gonna do now I'm going to plan out the layout and we're going to start placing things so we're going to build up areas we're going to sort of drop areas down um, so the next step is to plan out the board we've got to remember at this stage this is a board that i'm making for uh for the scour and the cheshire 2019 so it's it's particularly for an event um it's not a diorama board it's not a board that we're just doing for fun this is a board that needs to be played on and it needs to adhere to certain rules so that all the scenarios for Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game can be played on it and it's fair dependent on which side of the board that you start on. So with that in mind, we will get over to my desk and start sketching up some drawings. Hey guys, so as you can see, uh, the board has started to take shape now. I've put a hill in each corner on that side as per the sketch that I did. Um, it's created like a little valley area. Really nice visually, just, just adds a little something to the board. Uh, we've got a central hill on this side, which is nice, and it's got some uh, a, a rock face there. Again, just adds sort of tactical choices to when you're playing on the board. Small hill here. This hill is uh, just a slight hill and it's more for affecting line of sight and things like that across the board. So like, you know, shoot your armies that are just a clear uh, line of sight right across the board. Because it is a Mordor board, it's gonna be quite barren in the sense that there's not gonna be buildings on it and trees and things like that. So we need to come up with something that is gonna make it a little bit more interesting to play on. Um, over here, we have uh, the start of a rocky outcrop. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the camera in close and I'm just gonna show you how to make these. They're so easy. It's it's not even funny, I mean, uh, I'm not trying to teach anyone how to suck eggs, but I'll just show you how these are done, and at least then you're getting an insight into each step of the board build. Um, 
there's still a lot to do. It's very flat at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat some of the polystyrene up and just create some divots uh, and undulations across the board. Um, just, just so it's interesting to play on. Um, so let's do another small hill and rocky outcrop. I'll do that with you guys um, and then we'll move on. Okay, so all we're going to do to start with, we've got a, another piece of 25mm polystyrene. I've decided I'm going to do another small rocky outcrop around this area um, and roughly here along this edge. I'm just, again, finding it a bit blank here. I'm going to put another slight hill just running into the corner. So I'll start off with the rocky outcrop. Uh, really, really straightforward. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut myself... Um, using the flat edge of the 25mm uh, I'm just going to cut myself like a half moon shape but slightly irregular because I don't want it to be too circular I want it to be a more natural shape I'm going to use a sharp knife for that so I'll crack on and do that now so here's our shape as you can see I uh, just made it slightly irregular just put like a little s bend in it um i'm gonna sit this somewhere like this and the way that i'm thinking is um it's gonna enclose the camp so i'm gonna have the camp here so they've got they've got this rock face here uh, another rock face here and uh, the camp in the center so we get that done um and i want to make that more natural again so i'm going to get a hot wire cutter um, and i'm just going to smooth off these edges And as we can see, it just comes apart and we've got a nice splayed edge. That's going to go like that and it's going to be a more natural build up to some rock faces. For the rock faces, I use Woodland Scenics moulds and I use Plaster of Paris to make them. So, as we can see here, I have some different rock faces which I've cast using the moulds. Just different sizes and things like that. Obviously you get bigger ones, stumpier ones. It's different shapes and sizes and some of them are off cuts of other ones um, and all we're going to do these are going to attach to the flat edge uh, like so and just give it a nice rocky uh, finish um, and just they just look really nice i uh, do recommend that you pick up some of the molds um, from woodland scenics and cast some up i tend to when i'm doing a mix cast as many up as i can in one sitting so i'll probably do it for about an hour fill a box full of them pop the box on the shelf and then when I need them they're ready and they're nice and hard and they're fully set and dry um, they're not as easy to use if you're casting them and you're using them because um, they will be they will feel hard to the touch in the mold after a few minutes but they're still holding a lot of moisture and are quite powdery and the more you handle them it can rub uh, the detail off so yeah doing it that way and print you know casting them off uh, in multiples is a good idea so We'll forget about those for the minute. Put them to one side. And what we're going to do, we're going to stick this down using some of our trusty gator glue. Um, and then we're going to get some of our rock moulds. Kind of like these ones. And these are going to be stuck on using gator glue as well. So we've stuck them on, I'm happy with that for now. We're gonna leave that all to dry and then we'll come back to that. So I'm gonna move over to this corner here. So I'll just move the ca camera slightly and you can see what I'm doing. So here we have uh, a corner that I wanna put uh, a more sort of hilly area on. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the natural 90 degree angle of the board. Um, and I know it's gonna sit nicely on the corner for the 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna 
get that roughly where I want it to be. And then I'm going to think about drawing out how I want the curvature of the hill. Um, I and mean, this is going to be a slightly higher hill in this corner. So I'm going to double up. So I will start at the end of the board here. Um, and I think we'll just kind of make it more of a long, elongated hill. I'll cut the rest of this out now and then we'll get it on. So as we can see, we've got our rough shape. I am now going to use another piece of this. I need a nice straight edge because it's going to sit on here and just make this even higher. So I'll put that to one side for the moment. I don't have a straight edge. This is actually a rough edge, this edge. So I need a straight edge. So I'll get myself a rule like so. Nice sharp blade. And cut myself straight edge. So on that roughly like this, and I need now a straight edge at 90 degrees, so if I hold that nice and firmly as I lift, I can use my existing straight edge as a guide. Cut the polystyrene. So there we go, that's looking good. And I think I'll raise this one even more with this last small piece I've got. I've got a 90 degree from what I just cut. I'll pop this on there. Just continue that off like so. And there we go. And from here, we're gonna get our gator glue. Um, and we're going to leave that to dry and then we're going to start tapering the edges so I'll come back and do that um, when the glue's dry. So as you can see we've got the corner piece cut. We've glued that all down, that's all secured. Um, before I glue it to this corner I want to make this a hill so I'm going to get rid of these stepped features and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a hot wire cutter uh, and just take taper all the edges off so we get a nice shallow slope. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. As we can see, we've got a nice slope. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some sandpaper, I'm going to smoothen that edge, maybe just taper it off a little bit more that way, but we're going to attach that to the board like so. And that's pretty much how you're going to go around and fix all your hills and things on. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay folks, so as you can pretty much see, I'll tilt the board a little bit for you. Um, I've started to add a little bit of texture. I've got the rocky outcrops that I need. Um, I've put this hill in the corner um, and I've got a marksman, uh, what are these? I don't even know what these are called, what are they called? Uh, it's basically a heat gun, heat canister. Um, use different things, I do have like an electric heat gun, I've got small uh, creme brulee um, heaters, that's like that, one of those on an industrial scale. Um, I've got, I can't remember where I picked them up, but anything that generates heat, an electric heat gun is probably the safest because, um, you know, as soon as you let go of the trigger, it, it, it's, it starts to cool down, that stays quite hot. Uh, but depends what you've got or what you need to get your hands on. Um, you can get them off Amazon, just be careful because it is a gas canister. Um, anyway, we've textured the board. I've created, like I said, a lot of undulations, little divots and hills and bumps and things like that. Just gives it a more natural appearance. Um, 
don't worry how it looks when you do that because we are going to go over it with um, sculptor mold and we're, we're going to smooth everything out uh, and it's going to change drastically once we get to that stage so the ne that is pretty much the next stage from here i don't know how well it's coming out but there are some of the um divots which is this one here which runs into this corner and then one that runs from that hill directly up to here also and there's one just here um, which runs up to the top of the hill those are i'm still in two mines it may get to the sculpture mold stage and i just fill them over um, with it being a mordor board i was going to add some kind of lava i did say at the beginning of the video i'm not a fan of lava rivers um, i really don't like how it looks um but i think it just adds a little bit of color to what's basically going to be a black board um with some browns and grays and things like that in it it might just contrast the dark board well so i'm going to play that by ear so carry on following me in this video I'm going to start getting the sculpture mold on. I'll come back after that stage and um, we'll start detailing and adding colour and all the different textures and things like that. And that is the fun bit. Up to this stage is the sort of the work you put in the work in, so to speak. Um, it now starts to be a lot of fun. I, you start imagining your miniatures on, you start imagining things that you can do in game, moving your miniatures around certain bits of uh, terrain and scenery and things like that. So that's quite cool i'm looking forward to this beat this bit should i say um i've been to element games which i'll show you in a minute and i've picked up a lot of different um like ashen and uh, volcanic type uh, scatter um, it was quite difficult to get hold of i do know um as well as checking out element using our um affiliate link below for the bits that i'm going to use in this video that luke of luke's aps also does um a uh, volcanic type um floor covering which I'm yet to use, uh, but I have it on good authority that he's very, very good. So I will let you know how I get on with that, guys, once I do get it in hand and try it out. But for the minute, we're going to be using what I've got here in the man cave. And um, yeah, let's crack on and get it done. Hey, guys. So I am at the stage now where I've put a layer of sculptor mold all over the board. Um, it's starting to come together quite nicely. I'm quite enjoying how it's looking. Um, it's turning out a little bit better than, than I thought, which is always a nice surprise. Uh, what I now need to do is just smooth off some areas that I'm not so happy with how they've dried. Um, that's easily done with sculpture mold. You can have it just wet it and kind of rub it down and it gets rid of that. Um, and there's other bits that I just want to build up a little bit. So I'm going to do that. And then after that, I'm going to paint it. And that's when I'm going to come back to you guys. Um, excuse <laughs> the costume change constantly obviously i can't film all this in one night i'm doing it in evenings after work and things like that um so i don't know maybe when i get a little bit more professional there'll be more continuity uh editing and i'll make sure i wear the same t-shirt throughout so hopefully it's not uh getting on your nerves too much and i've not got my red penny on i need to get that back on before i paint because i'd hate to get black paint on my beautiful yellow top table gaming t-shirt so i'm going to go away and do that smooth off the areas and then I'm going to cover the whole board in black paint and then we'll come back. Okay, so first layer of black paint is on the board. Um, it's already made a massive difference. Uh, this is kind of, I've said it before, the stage of the video when you start doing things and all the, the graft of the beginning of the board where you're not seeing much return, just it all starts to come together. So I'm really happy with how it's looking. Uh, I've painted the rock faces. They were plaster, if you remember. Um, so what I did is I left them white when I painted the board black and I used the leopard spot technique which I don't need to explain it if you've done terrain before you know what it is if you don't if you go on YouTube and search the leopard spot technique it's a really good technique to get semi-realistic looking rocks um, the only difference with this time and on this board I went over with a really heavy black wash um, at the end because I want them to be black rocks rather than sort of all the different colours because I've put greens in there, I've put ochres in there, I think there's a bit of blue in there. Um, I want them really, really dark and black. I just want it to see so you can differentiate between the rocks and the ground cover, if that makes sense. Okay, guys, so we are really getting there now. Um, as you can see, I'm still not over the moon with these lava flows, but I think it breaks the black up, so I think it's like, you know. It's just something that I'm going to have to put up with. Um, I was going to do them as resin and shiny and stuff. I think I'm going to leave them as they are. Um, one thing that I probably will do, but it'll be at a later date now, um, is get some crackle paint um, and just put it 
a lot around the edges and then the odd bit in between um, and make sure it's black. If, I'm not sure if you can get black, but I know you can get white, so I'll just put black paint in it um, just to create like, you know, um, cracked magma or whatever it's called, which I think will look quite cool and make it just stand out a little bit more. But other than that, it's a barren board, which is what it's supposed to be. There is more stuff to go on, like I've got the tents. Um, I'm toying me the idea of some like burnt trees. I, mean, I don't know, are the trees in Mordor? I'm not too sure. Um, just something just to add to and just give little things that just catch your eye and things like that. But um, overall, I'm really happy with it. I'm not sure how well it's coming across on camera, but sat here looking at it, I think it looks great. Really happy with the ground cover. Um, I was really worried about it being too black um, and just, you know, not being able to show things up. But I've, I've mixed in bits of greys. There is bits of blues in there and things. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the texture. Um, I've got a few tufts to go on, um, which I've started. Um, I've had to order some more because I've, I've run out of um, dry, like dry earth tufts. So I'm going to get some more of those ordered. Well, I've ordered them, waiting for them to come. But other than that, yeah, it's great. Um, let me know what you think about this board. I'm going to post some pictures of the board complete with miniatures on it and the tents and things like that after this. Um, and I can't wait to play on it and I can't wait to see people playing on it. This is for the event Scouring of Cheshire, which is at the time of filming a week and a half away. Um, so, yeah, really excited to see what people think of it. I like it. I really like it. Um, I like it more than I thought I would, uh, which is great. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Thanks, man. If there's anything in the video, um, this wasn't a tutorial video. This was kind of a show my process from beginning through to end of making a board. If there's anything in the video that you'd like me to go into more detail with, whether it's laying ground cover, you know, making the rock moulds, whatever, um, let me know in the comments below uh, and I'll see what I can do. Let me know in the comments. Definitely get involved in the chat uh, below because what that does is if you let me know the kind of stuff that you like or the kind of stuff that you don't like, um, it helps us with future content to make sure that we're creating stuff that you guys want to see. So get commenting on the videos, guys. It really, really does help. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out all the links below for our uh, affiliate links and Facebook, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and Patreon. Patreon is huge. We can only make these videos because of our Patreon, patrons, and um, yeah, it means a lot. So yeah, check that out. Um, but yeah. I will see you in the next video if I don't see you before then. I'll see a lot of you, or 80 of you, at uh, Scar and the Cheshire, which uh, I'm really excited for. So um, stay safe, and I will see you all soon.